Hi everyone and welcome back for part four of this fabric end-to-end -end demo series. In this video, we're going to see how we can reference existing cloud data directly from within fabric with no data copy required. This is going to use the shortcut feature. So let's get going. So shortcuts, what are they? Well, essentially they are data virtualization across your one lake and across clouds. So what's data virtualization? Well, it's essentially the ability to reference data at source without having to copy it into whatever system that you're, that you're referencing it from. So it's this one copy principle that you've probably seen in some of the Microsoft Fabric marketing, but it supports data stores like Azure Data Lake Storage. So that's still within Azure, but it's outside of Microsoft Fabric as a SaaS product. So we've got Azure Data Lake Storage. We've also got AWS S3 buckets that we can reference our di data directly from. Or the final option currently is referencing within your own one lake. So that's files or tables within other workspaces or other, other, other databases or lake houses, sorry, within your fabric tenant. Now, the benefit of this is we no longer have to maintain a copy of the data and we no longer have to maintain the process by which that copy gets updated and refreshed. Um, so essentially we're, we're, we're benefiting massively from not having that synchronization issue, not having to manage that. That doesn't mean that this feature is free. There will still be the costs, the, the, the egress costs of getting the data from your source to, uh, to fabric, but depending on how much, how much you're doing that, it may or may not actually cost you, but that's for a, a, a later, a later video, but essentially shortcut allow us to shortcut to our data without having to copy it over. So what do they look like? Let's take a look. So I've actually got a, an Azure data lake store here, um, that I want to reference some data from. And the data I want to reference is actually in this raw zone. So this is a kind of a previous uh, project that, that we've done that we want to, we don't want to have to go through the process of grabbing the data from source again. So I'm in this default container and within this raw subdirectory, I have a bunch of sources. You'll see the familiar land registry. We've also used this ADLS account in the, in the past to land that land registry data. But the one I want to create a shortcut for is this ONS data. So the Office for National Statistics, and this is giving us information about postcodes and so more detailed geographical information about postcodes that we can use potentially in reporting going forward to generate some nice map visuals and uh, do some great analysis over some maps. Uh, so within this postcode directory, um, directory, it's just a bunch of csv files and none of them is a is a huge file in the, in itself but we've got a significant amount of data here that we don't want to have to manually copy over by creating an azure uh, data factory pipeline for example we just want to be able to reference this from source so let's do that so back in fabric i'm actually in my bronze demo lake house here uh, so you're from the previous episodes will remember that we uploaded this raw data this land registry data via a data factory pipeline. And we have the complete file and we've actually had a monthly file arrive since then. Now to create the shortcut, first you need to figure out where you want to put the shortcut. Now I want to, I'm thinking of my data lake in this, in this taxonomy, essentially my lake house files is in this taxonomy. We've got the raw zone here. Then usually under that you put kind of the data source that, that the data is coming from. So we've got our land registry data. And we, we want the ONS data, the Office for National Statistics postcode directory data to go at the same level of this as this, because we've got this taxonomized path and we're following, uh, we're following it to keep that consistency and make sure we apply that structure to the file section of our lake house. So to create the, to create the shortcut here, it's, it's important that you click on the parent folder that you want the, the shortcut to come underneath. So I've clicked on raw because I want ONS to come underneath and sit at the same level as land registry. So now I click right click and I click new shortcut. And we've got these three options that I mentioned, one lake, Azure data lake store gen two and S3. If I click Azure data lake store gen two, it comes up with these uh, options in the dialog box. 
after it loads. There we go. Uh, and I'm just going to copy a URL that I've got on a different screen, which is the URL to my storage account. So it's this DDO data lake storage, and it's a DFS endpoint because it's an ADLS gen two account. And this is the path all the way to, um, to that actual file, uh, well, uh, sorry, directory. And actually I've, I've created the connection before. So it remembers that I, I've, I've done this in the past, but if I just delete that again, temporarily, if you are creating a new connection, it's going to ask you to give the connection a name, and then it's going to give you, uh, ask for you for some authentication details, and it's going to uh, offer you organizational account, access key, SAS token, or service principle. Now, when I set this up previously, I did it via an, an organizational account. I'm just going to click next because all it's all authorized already. And then on the next screen, we get information that it wants around the shortcut name and the subpath. Now the subpath is the, the path within this, um, storage account over in Azure. Um, so the path within that and within the file system that points to the root of the data that we want to replicate to reference. So the shortcut name is important as well, because that's what will show up in the, in the lake house view. So I'm going to put ONS here. And then for this subpath, I'm actually going to, uh, point to the root ONS folder. So slash default, that's my file system in Azure Data Lake storage. Raw is the first subdirectory. ONS is a, is the next subdirectory. And I'm, I want everything under ONS to now come in as via my shortcut into my account. So I click create and as quickly as that, because no data copy is actually happening. It's, it's there and it's available. It's fully, it's authenticated. It's proven that I can access this data. So now it's just, it's just essentially referencing it from my one lake. So it's got the postcode directory and it's re replicated the, the folder hierarchy, uh, that was in my storage account over in ADLS. And if I had more subfolders under ONS, it would just show that as well. And it would have created the same hierarchy. And just like we could with, um, uh, the, the actual data that we landed, if I want to preview this data, that's absolutely fine. And, and that was essentially referencing that data, sending a query over to the data, um, to, uh, without having to kind of create a full copy of it over in the one lake. And look, we've got our data there. Now, obviously there's things that need to be done to this data because everything is turning up as a string, but this is our raw data. We will, we'll parse it and we will create data types in the silver zone. But that's it for, for this video. We've shown how we can create a shortcut to some ADLS Gen 2 data in Azure. In the next video, we'll look at, take a look at a couple of tools that we can use to navigate our data in one lake on our local machines. And some of the things that you might need to be wary of when doing that. Now, if you found this video useful, please hit like and hit subscribe to stay up to date with the rest of the series going forward. See you next time.